Okay, suppose that we have a binary star system. And now this, there's a little trick here in that let's assume that these are just stationary in time, which they're not, you know, they, they would be orbiting each other. But at this point, we want to calculate the gravitational field for these two masses. So we, their, their centers are a distance d apart. One is a mass m, one's four times mass 4m. And so the question is, where is the gravitational field, if any place, zero? So remember, we have this. Uh, this, if I have one mass, and I have some point over, some mass over here, let's say two masses, m1, m2, and that's the vector r from the center of that one to that one, I can calculate the gravitational force, fg equals negative g m1 m2 over the magnitude of r squared times r hat. So the r hat just says that gravitational force is pulling it towards there if you want it as a vector. In this case, we have a one-dimensional problem, so we don't have to make it that complicated. Um, but there we have it. That's the gravitational force. Now, if I take this gravitational force and I divide by m2, I get the gravitational field g. And this is the force per unit mass. And yes, on the surface of the Earth, g is, uh, let's say, g surface. I can't spell it. It's 0, negative 9.8, 0 newtons per kilogram. That's the gravitational field on the surface of the Earth, but we can calculate that anywhere. Okay, I'm going to start over a new page because I've already made up, made up too much mess. So we want to look at, let's assume that these are on the x, y axis, and I'm going to put the one mass at the origin, and we're going to see where we could possibly get the gravitational field to be zero. Okay, so here we have the origin. Here's m, and then here's 4m, and this is d. Okay, let's just look at some locations. So I know that if I have a mass, the gravitational field always points towards it, no matter where you are. And the further away you get, the less it is. Um, mass, oh, the other th important thing is that the gravitational field, just like the gravitational force, is cumulative. So it obeys what's called superposition. So if I take a point up here and I want to calculate the gravitational field, it's the gravitational field right there due to mass m plus that one over there as a vector. Okay, so I add up the gravitational fields. I can find them individually. Okay, so let's consider this region over here. So here, x is greater than d. So I'm going to draw two gravitational fields. The first one's going to be due to this mass right here. So this mass is going to have a gravitational field. Let's call this um, 1 and 2. Let's call this 2. Let's call this 1. So this one's going to create a gravitational field at that location. It has a larger mass and it's close, so it's actually going to be quite large. So I'll call this, oh, I'm sorry, we're calling G2. That's the gravitational field. Now what about this one? This one's also going to pull to the left, but it's not going to be as big because the mass is smaller and it's further away, so it's going to be tiny. But the point is they're both in the negative x direction, so they can't cancel. There's no way this region could have a zero gravitational field. What about over here? Let's pick a spot right here. Now this mass M1 is going to have a gravitational field going that way. This one's going to be going that way. Now they're not going to be the same uh, magnitude uh, and depending on the distance, but it is possible that if I get close enough to this one, then the gravitational force from two, one could be as great as two and they could cancel. Over here, now again, both the gravitational forces are in the same direction, they can't cancel. So I'm only in this region right there. So let's call this distance x and let's get an expression for the gravitational field. So g equals gx equals g x1 plus g x2, so just in the x direction. So this is going to be equal to, for x1, it's going to be negative, because it's in the negative x direction, negative g m over x squared. That's the gravitational field due to mass 1. This one's going to be in the positive x direction, because it's pulling that way, so it's going to be plus g 4m over this distance. So what's this distance? Well, if this is d, 
this is x minus d minus x. This is d minus x squared. I have to still have to square that distance. And I want to set this equal to 0. Now I want to solve for x. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to add this term to both sides, and I get g m over x squared equals g 4m over d minus x squared. Uh, the g and the m's cancel. Now I can multiply both sides by x squared, multiply both sides by d minus x squared, and I get 4x squared equals d minus x squared. And now uh, I want to solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply, multiply this out. So I get 4x squared equals uh, d squared minus 2dx plus x squared. Uh, so now I have a quadratic equation. Uh, let's just move everything to one side, and I get uh, 3x squared plus 2dx minus d squared equals 0. And so you could probably factor this. Um, let's say 3x um, minus, I'm just guessing here, minus d. Squared, is that right? So get no times x minus d plus d. I think that's right. Because so I get 3x squared, I get 3x, yeah. Yeah, I did it. I factored it. You could just use a quadratic equation. So if this is the case, then either x equals uh, 3x equals d or x equals negative d. Yeah, because if this if 3x equals d or if 3x equals negative d. Okay, so x equals negative d. That doesn't work because that's not in my range. But this one is. So x equals d over 3. That's where I need to be. But see this, if I put x equals d, that'd be over here, but we already said it doesn't work in that range. So that, that's the region. Uh, now, what about over here? What about off the x-axis? Can I find the electric, the gravitational field of zero up there? No, because these are going to be in different directions. They can't add up to zero. The end.